Hello, in this video I'm going to show you how to create a dictionary-like data structure that you can use to look up information. I'm going to start with our template output code uh, where we uh, get a reference to the output area div on the page. We're going to construct an output string and we're going to save it here. I'm going to turn off live updates over here. So we're going to start by asking the user to enter something. Um, in this case, a word, which we'll call word. Uh, we're going to prompt the user for this, and we're just going to ask them to enter something. If I was to say output equals word here, well, what happens when we run this is the user is going to be asked to enter something. They're going to type in um, something here, like LOL, and they're going to see that displayed here. So we're just taking the word they entered and displaying it as the output. So now what we're going to do is create uh, a dictionary of some common internet acronyms. And then what we're going to do is look up uh, the word entered by the user in that uh, list of acronyms and if we find it we're going to replace the word and instead of displaying that we're going to display the full meaning of that. So let's have a go at this. Um, first off I'm going to create uh, the structure that's going to, to hold my list of acronyms. Um, so I'm going to just call this acronyms and um, we're going to create this as an array. So I can create an array. Here's an empty array. This is an array literal. And I'm going to put some entries into this array. And each of the entries in my array is going to be an object. So this is the first object. And this object is going to have um, two properties. It's going to have uh, an acronym. And um, I could pick one of these. I'm going to do OMG. And uh, I'm going to have here meaning. And this is going to be, oh my god. OK, so that's the first entry in our list of acronyms. I'm going to create a couple more here. So I'm just going to copy this structure. Uh, I need a comma to separate each of the entries in my array. And uh, the next one I'm going to do here is LOL. Which is laugh out loud. And you probably noticed no one ever really types these in capitals. So for the sake of speed, let's just leave these as lowercase for the lookup. Um, let's add two more of these. So I'm going to add another one here. Let's choose um, LMAO. So laughing my ass off. And WTF. So what the ah this function i'm sure you're wondering what functions are you've heard a few references to them now over the last couple of weeks so we're going to spend uh next week week four talking about functions in in greater detail so now we have our list of acronyms each of the elements of the array is an object and each of the objects has the same structure. Um, they each have an acronym property and a meaning property. So and now what we want to do is look through the array um, and see if we can find an acronym that matches the word that the user entered. So how do we do this? Well we're going to need to write a for loop 
um, that goes through each of the elements of the array. So let's do that. Uh, it basically looks like this for, um, I'm going to say var i equals zero, start at the first element of the array, that is the element at index zero. Next I'm going to say while i is less than acronyms dot length, this is the length of the array, um, in this case four, because we have four elements within it. And we're going to say i plus plus, we're going to increment the value of, of our, our index. So the body of my for loop is um, I need to get this object and this object here would be acronyms i. So on the first iteration of the loop it would be this object, on the second iteration of the loop it would be this object, third this object. Um, and then if I want to refer to the acronym property within this, I can do so by just saying dot acronym. So now on each iteration of the loop, what I have here is going to be on the first iteration, the acronym property of the first element of the array, so this string. On the second iteration, it's going to be this string. On the third iteration, this string. So now I want a condition, because I want to uh, do something conditionally on this value, and I want to say if my acronym, the, the element of my acronym's array and its acronym property is equal to the word, that is the variable entered by the user, I'm going to replace my word um, that the user's entered with The meaning. So what would the meaning be? Um, I need the object from my acronyms array. Well, we know that was acronyms i. And if instead of the acronym we want the meaning, we just have to say dot meaning here. Okay. Uh, I should also correct the case in this last one. So now I should have some code that allows the user to enter a word and we have some code that goes through the acronyms table or, or list if you like and checks against every entry to see if it matches. If it matches it's going to replace the word with the meaning um, or the, the, the full words that make up the acronym or if it doesn't find it, it will just leave the value of the word as it is. So let's try this out. Um, hopefully I don't have any errors in the code. I'm going to turn the live updates on. We're going to get a prompt here. So first of all, I'm going to try something that isn't in my list of acronyms. Um, so I'm going to try uh, IMHO, which is in my humble opinion. So this is not an acronym that we have, so if I enter it I should just get IMHO. Okay, so far so good. So now I'm going to run this um, and I'm just adding a space into the, the code so that the playground thinks it's changed and it's going to show me the prompt again. So I add the space in and uh, I get another chance to, to type something in. So I'm going to try OMG and sure enough it displays oh my god. And uh, I'm going to try another one, which is um, LMAO, and I get laughing my ass off. Okay, so this all works, um, and we've shown how we can use an array as our dictionary. But it turns out that JavaScript provides us with a data structure that can make this whole process a lot easier. So take one last look at this code that we have here, and then I'm going to rewrite it uh, to use an object. When we saw objects, we saw that we can add named properties to objects, and they can have values. So I'm going to turn off live updates, and instead of having my acronyms array here, 
I'm going to create an acronyms object. So I'm just going to put some space here. And uh, this is an object literal. And if you recall, we could create properties within our object literal by giving them a name of the property. And I'm going to choose OMG and giving them a value. And the value here can be, oh my God, if I can type it right. Um, and I'm going to do the same thing for these other acronyms that I had, LOL and um, laugh out loud. And uh, I'll also do LMAO. And uh, WTF. What this function? Okay, so we have our same set of acronyms here, but this time we've just got an object that has uh, a named property, which is effectively our. our dictionary word and our value which is like our diff dictionary definition and we have the same process we want to um, use the acronym itself to look up the meaning if it's stored in our in our set of acronyms here so it turns out we don't even need a for loop um, in order to look up whether a particular um, acronym is present, that is a particular property of this object is present. And if you recall, it's quite possible to just ask an object for a property, and if that property doesn't exist, then the object just gives us a value of undefined. So this very quickly allows us to check whether um, there's a particular property present. So let's do that. We can scrap our for loop, and our test here is basically just going to be acronyms and we want to ask it for the particular acronym. So we can't use our dot notation, we have to use square bracket notation. The thing we're looking up is the value inside our word variable. So if the word entered was OMG then the value of this variable would be omg and that would cause this expression to give us oh my god if instead the user entered lol for word uh, then we would expect this expression to give us laugh out loud if the user entered something that isn't in our acronyms table, uh, what would happen is, uh, like, uh, and an example of this would be the same one I used before, um, in my humble opinion, I am uh, HO, and if this was entered, well, it wouldn't find this listed as one of the properties of the acronyms object, so all that would happen is we'd get back undefined. So we can do a check, um, and, and our logic here Basically, we want to check if we get back the value undefined. But if we get back undefined, it isn't present, and we don't want to update the meaning. So we basically want to say if we look up this word in our acronyms object, and it isn't undefined, that means it's present here, then that's when we want to update our word with the value. And what is the value? It's literally just this here. So as long as it's found in the object and it's not undefined, we can do this. And you can see this, you know, these five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten lines are a lot more elegant than what we had before, our, our, our array filled with objects and a for loop that went through and checked each of the values. Um, here we just have a single object. It has a property for each thing we might want to look up. Um, 
these things don't have to just be simple strings, uh, simple um, variable names, if you like. It's quite possible to, to have um, things with spaces in them and specify them like this, so you can have more complicated acronyms. And we can test that this code works. So I'm going to turn live updates back on. Again, it prompts us. I'm going to enter um, IMHO, in my humble opinion, and OK, it's not found, so it just displays uh, that. I'm going to try entering a different value, which is um, LOL, and you see we get the value life out loud. Um, I can do it once more. I can do uh, LMAO, laughing my ass off, and you're going to see this code works, and it works exactly the same way. So if you ever need to create some kind of lookup table where you've got um, say dictionary de uh, words and, and definitions or you've got something like a set of acronyms that you might want to replace um, uh, you can you can use this kind of data structure so someone was asking how um, word or other word processes uh, implement the feature where you can enter particular words and create some replacement for that word that, that gets put in its place. So as the user types, if they were to type LOL, you it would get replaced with laugh out loud. Or if there's a common misspelling that you have um, for something, maybe you accidentally or f spent some time in the US and, and type color without a U frequently, you could um, create a replacement that rewrote color uh, without a U to be color with a U. This is the kind of way that something like that would be implemented. Um, basically just a, some kind of efficient lookup where you, you can easily perform a check to see if something exists and if it does do something and if it doesn't, um, you know, don't worry about replacing it. So I hope you found this useful. Thanks for watching.